When a patient suffers a, a severe traumatic brain injury, and say, for example, they're in Afghanistan, they had an IED explosion underneath uh, the uh, vehicle that they were driving, and they've hit their head really bad. The first thing that will happen is they'll be triaged by their medic, they'll be airlifted and taken to a hospital that can support a polytrauma patient. So uh, we're talking a hospital that's capable of delivering a very high level of care. Now, if the patient has suffered a traumatic brain injury and um, has been evaluated by either an emergency doctor or a neurologist or a neurosurgeon and is suffering from an increase in brain swelling, sometimes medications just don't help bring that swelling down. So one of the procedures that neurosurgeons perform is something called a craniectomy. And a craniectomy is really the removal of a large piece of skull, usually about 13 inches, to make room for an expanding and a swelling brain. And that piece of bone, if it is something that occurs in the war zone, is usually discarded because, as you know, when there's a traumatic injury, um, it, it's not often that it's just a clean traumatic injury. There's usually shrapnel, there's usually dirt, and the bottom line is the, the bone specimen is usually contaminated. So usually that piece is discarded in the sense that it's put in a freezer and stored away without necessarily thinking that it's gonna be replanted. When patients have recovered, the brain swelling has come down, and they return back stateside to their VA or to Walter Reed, we can perform a reconstruction procedure. And that's what I'm most familiar uh, with. And we usually use a special CAT scan of the patient's head, which draws an outline of the defect. And then we use a 3D printer to print a perfect match. And uh, usually that's made out of something called peak, and that's a type of plastic-like substance. And uh, once that implant is built, we're able to surgically implant it and reconstruct the calvarium. So patients don't have to walk around with a helmet. And um, if they were to fall, because remember, most of these patients are still recovering, they're in rehab, they're actively moving. If they were to fall, they're protected from an injury to the actual surface of their brain. And so a craniectomy procedure is really a life-saving procedure with the hopes of preventing brain damage that may result from uncontrolled swelling.